Welcome, fellow audio sorcerers, wizards, and gurus to my channel. I am Dan Spencer, and I am the audio sorcerer. This is a channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. Now, in this video, we're going to continue along with our Pro Tools series, and I'm going to teach you how to record audio inside of Pro Tools. Now, this video is great for beginners, uh, people that may not have used Pro Tools yet or are new to recording. So I hope you guys get something out of this video. But before we get to the video, I do want to mention I offer uh, mixing and mastering services. If you go to audiosorcerer.com, you can check out my rates and you can hear my samples. And new clients get 10% off. So if you forget that link, you can always go down in the description below and the link will be right there also. So uh, make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe because that helps me to continue to make content for you. And also hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So without further ado, let's get to the tutorial. All right, so here we are on my computer here. And the first thing we need to do before we can even record any audio is we need to make sure we have an audio interface. Now, I'm assuming if you guys are watching this video, you already have purchased an interface. Um, so most of them work the same from an installation standpoint. You usually just turn them on. Then you plug in the cable to your computer, whether it be a USB, a Thunderbolt, or a Firewire interface. And it usually gets the driver for it on its own. Now, if um, you need to download a driver, this is the process that I recommend doing for it. So I opened up Google here, and literally all you need to do is you just need to type in the name of your interface. So I have a Focusrite Scarlet. And then after that, just put what type of driver it is. So I have a USB driver, and then hit search. And usually within the first couple options here, you're going to find what you need. So I'm going to go to the first one here, which has the download section for the customer portal. Let's open that up. And if you have a Focusrite product, this is pretty easy to find what you need here. So I pick my brand here, which is Focusrite. If I need to pick my product range, I'll go over here and I will scroll down to the Scarlet. And I have the uh, first gen 18i20, so let's click on that. And I don't really need to go to any of these other options here. If I just click down on software here, then you'll see I have this option here, which is the most recent and it also includes the USB driver. Now the Scarlet Mix Control is something a little extra beyond the USB driver, but uh, they're kind of one in the same when you do the download. So, I mean, that's all you need to do. Go to your manufacturer's website, check and make sure there's not, um, you know, a newer USB driver than what may have came with the box, and then uh, you should be all good to go. Now, one thing you can check uh, before you get into your recording software to make sure that your audio interface was installed properly is you can go down to the audio section of your computer Right click on the little speaker down here, go to open sound settings, and uh, you can check to make sure that it's available to your computer. So as you can see on the output side, I have the Focusrite USB right here. And the input is my record option, and uh, I'm not using the Focusrite for that, but if I do the little drop down here, you can see that I have the Focusrite USB also available here. So that means that my interface is all ready to go. So now that we have our audio interface installed properly, the next thing that we need to do is to launch Pro Tools. Now I'm going to assume that you have Pro Tools already installed on your computer, but if you don't, I have a video on how to install Pro Tools in four easy steps, and that's popping up across the top right now. So I would suggest that you watch that video before you continue on with this one. So I have a uh, Raven in my computer here, which is a kind of a touch overlay from Slate. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that now, but for me to launch Pro Tools, it's a little bit different than how you're going to launch it. So for you, you're just going to double click on the Pro Tools icon right here on your desktop, or you can always, you know, go to your search bar and type in Pro Tools and launch the app if you don't uh, have it on your desktop as a shortcut. So for me, I'm actually going to double click on the Raven here. And then this little interface pops up here for me, and I just have to hit open for Pro Tools and it's going to launch it for me. So now that we have Pro Tools open here, the first window that pops up is the dashboard window. And within that window, we have a tab called Recent here, and that should be the first tab that is opened up when you launch this. And this shows your recent projects in here that you have worked on. Now, if this is your first time launching Pro Tools, uh, this is likely gonna be empty. Uh, now, another tab here is the Create tab, and this is where we're gonna actually create the project for this tutorial. This is where you're gonna make your new project. And we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the last tab here is the Projects tab, and this is for any projects that you have living on the Avid Cloud. Now, if you have a subscription for Pro Tools as opposed to buying it straight out, 
uh, you should have access to the cloud and you are able to upload, um, I forget the max amount of projects, but it's, um, it's not a whole lot, but you can have so many projects up on the cloud at a time. And that allows you to uh, collaborate with the other artists locally, you know, remotely or um, throughout the whole US or the whole world. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty cool feature. But uh, I think I'm going to do another tutorial on that independently. So with that being said, let's go back to the Create tab here. And uh, we need to give our project a name. So why don't we call it a Recording Test. And then we get to determine where we're going to store it at. So as we talked about, the Collaboration Cloud Backup, that is for here. So we're not going to do that. So we're just going to do our local storage session here. Now, speaking of storage, I do want to recommend if you have two hard drives on your computer, it's best to store your audio and your sessions on a different hard drive than your, in this case, would be your C drive where your actual Pro Tools is running at. So I actually have um, my all of my audio data, all my sessions on a separate hard drive from my C drive, and that helps things run better. Now moving to the next section is the template section here. We are gonna skip over this because uh, we're gonna create this session from scratch. So just skip over this and let's go down to file type. Now, if you have a PC, you're gonna to wanna to have this set on Wave. And if you have a Mac, I believe you need to have it set on Eighth. And then for your bit depth down here, uh, you're gonna to wanna to have it set on 24 bit. Um, this defaults a 32 bit float, but I recommend just uh, skipping over that and go to 24 bit, um, it's a safe bet. And for sampling rate, uh, 441 is what this opens in, and I do recommend that you record your projects at 441 because we're going to be bouncing down all of our music to 441 if we're recording at house sampling rate anyway. So you might as well, you know, just start there. And there's been some debate about that, but I think I think the agreement has been pretty much 441 is where you need to be. Now, I record um, YouTube videos, of course. I'm doing a tour for you here. And my camera shoots its audio in 48 kilohertz. So what I want to do for my situation is I want to do this at 48 because I'm actually shooting this tutorial for film. And I just want all my stuff to be cohesive at the end. So that's the scenario where I would use a higher sampling rate. And then for IO settings here, I recommend just doing this on stereo mix. It usually defaults to last use, but uh, stereo mix is a safe bet for that. So the last thing we want to look at is location here. And this is where we're going to actually save our session at. So I have a uh, Pro Tools folder here for projects on my second hard drive, as mentioned before. So let's click on that. And uh, folder structure is very important. You definitely want to take the time to make sure that you are, you know, saving your projects by, you know, artists that you're working with and making sure that you're keeping the dates and stuff in there. That's very important. So after I selected this folder here, all I need to do is go down to use current folder, click on that. And then everything's pretty much ready to go. So all we need to do after that is hit the create button and it's gonna launch the project. So after your project is done being created, you're gonna see the edit window here. And the two windows we're gonna work with in this tutorial are the edit and mix windows. And there's a great keyboard shortcut to go back and forth between the two. And that is control equal sign. So I can toggle back and forth by clicking that. And on a Macintosh, it is a command equal sign. So what we wanna check is we wanna actually go up to our setup section here then we want to go down to uh, Playback Engine. And we want to make sure for Playback Engine, we have our interface selected. So I have Focusrite USB ASIO selected. And uh, for recording purposes, you're going to make sure that you have your hardware buffer size as low as possible. Um, I can bring mine down to 32 samples. That would be great. Now, what this has to do with is latency. So when I speak into a microphone, and I hear it back in my headphones, I wanna make sure that there's no delay because if you're trying to sing and you have delay, you know, it's, it's really hard to do and, and you don't wanna be in that situation. So this setting here, what I recommend is when you're mixing, leave it in 1024, but when you're recording, bring it as low as you can. And what I mean by as low as you can is as low as your computer can handle it, your computer CPU, because it becomes more CPUs intensive when you bring this down. So in our situation, we're gonna record just a speaking vocal track. So we'll do it at 128 samples. And then that should be good there. Uh, make sure you leave this one, ignore errors during playback record, leave that off, because that can cause clicks and pops. And these two options here, feel free to leave enabled. Um, and then the cache size, just leave on normal. So let's just hit okay there. So now that we have our audio interface uh, selected in Pro Tools, uh, the next thing we need to do is to create an audio track. So the best way to create an audio track is to use a keyboard shortcut, and that would be Control-Shift-N. 
and that launches this window here on a Mac it is command shift N. Now, if you don't remember that, you can actually just go up to the uh, track tab up here and click on new, and that brings up the same window here. Now we're just gonna create one audio track. We want this to be in mono because we only have one microphone. If you have two microphones, then you would want to be in stereo. And then uh, we wanna make sure it's an audio track. We wanna leave it in samples. And uh, we'll just call this track vocals. And then we wanna go to create. So now that we have our audio track in here, the next important thing to make sure you have visible is the IO section here, because this is where we're gonna allocate our inputs and our outputs in relation to our audio interface. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna go up to the view tab up here if you don't see this. So uh, if you go to edit window views and then you go down to IO, make sure this has a check mark by it and then you'll see it down here. So depending on your audio interface, you may have one channel, you may have two channels, four channels, eight channels, maybe even more. So we wanna make sure that we are recording the proper channel that you have your instrument plugged into or your microphone. In our scenario, we're gonna be using channel one on the interface, that's where I have my microphone plugged into. So we wanna go here and make sure that uh, mic one is selected, which it is, but I do wanna show you what this looks like. So if you go down to interface here, you can see that I have all these mic options here. And then a lot of interfaces have stuff related to SPDIF and ADAT. Uh, don't worry about that. Just worry about the actual channels that exist physically on your interface in the sense of which you would plug a guitar in directly or a microphone. So we have mics one through eight because I have an eight channel interface and we're gonna leave this selected on mic one. And for output, we just wanna check this here and then go down to output here and make sure that you have one and two stereo selected as your output. This usually is the default for pretty much every audio interface. So you should be safe selecting that. Uh, if you don't hear audio, feel free to comment in here and uh, we can take a look at it together. But uh, this is uh, usually the default for all audio interfaces. So now that we have our ins and outs set up and we have our interface all selected, all good to go, we want to record and enable the track here and then we'll hit the record button here. So the button next to the record button is the input monitoring button. And this is good for if you want to uh, check the quality of a microphone or maybe check mic placement or if you're using the right microphones. Um, this lets you hear what it sounds like before you record it. So if I uh, turned off um, the record enable button here and turn this on, you can see that I can also see audio coming in. So it basically allows you to preview your uh, input. So um, in this scenario, we're gonna leave that off and we're just gonna leave record enable on. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much ready to record our track. But before we do that, we do wanna make sure that we have proper mic level coming in for this. Now, since you're recording digital audio at 24 bit, you don't need to get as close to clipping as possible. It's not like the analog days. If I'm hitting about, I don't know, 50% on this meter here, um, I'm probably fine. Um, if I'm peaking around 75%, that's probably perfect. And that's a very generalization of <laughs> you know how to set your audio levels. But that's what I recommend when you're starting here. So I'm gonna go up to the microphone here and make sure when I'm speaking into it that I'm hitting probably about you know 50% here on this meter. So let me do that. Check, check, one, two, hey, hey, hey. Microphone, check, one, two, two, hey, hey, one, two. Okay, so speaking into my other microphone that I'm recording with here, I was hitting about 50% here. And uh, you know, it's probably better to look at the mix window meter when you're doing this because you're gonna get more of a um, accurate representation because you have you know much better view here. So I should check in the mix window before I record. So that's what I'm gonna do. Microphone check, testing one, two, hey, hey, hey. One, two, check, check, one, two. Okay, so that's about halfway up. Now, if you record it softer than you like it, but your signal to noise ratio is good, I mean, my mic is right up to my face, so I'm not too much worried about the outside noise. You can increase that level after you recorded it. So you do have some options and you have some fixes you can put into place in case you didn't get it quite how you wanted it. But I think we're good here. So I'm gonna go back to the edit window. So in the edit window here, the next thing I had to do is I just got to hit uh, record and you have a couple options for that. Uh, you can open up your transport window and that's actually gonna be another shortcut key which is control numeric one. So let's open that up here. And it's actually on my other screen and drag it over here. Uh, so you can simply hit the record button there. 
And uh, the other option would be to hit uh, just numeric three on your uh, numeric keypad on your keyboard, and that will also start the recording. So a couple other options I think that are important in the transport here when it comes to recording are the pre-roll, post-roll, count off, and tempo. Now for pre-roll, this is gonna determine how many bars it starts recording before where you have it selected on the timeline. So if I click right here, so when I actually hit record, it's gonna start recording two bars before here, which is pretty much like two measures. That's the same for the post roll, but on the back end. Now the count off is how many bars are going to, I guess you could say play before it starts recording. So if I have it clicked here and I hit record, it's gonna start recording here, but it's gonna give me, um, if I had the you know, click track enabled here, it's gonna give me eight ticks before it starts recording. That's two bars, since we're in the meter of four four, but that's music theory and that's, that's for another conversation. Uh, so let's move on to tempo. Tempo is extremely important because that's gonna all determine, you know, how fast or slow your song is. And you of course wanna record all of your music you know, to a metronome, uh, making sure that you're in tempo because that's very important, especially in today's music. So since we're doing spoken word, uh, tempo does not matter. You know, tempo matters if you're gonna be, have instruments and it's an actual song. And uh, basically the default is always 120. And if you wanna change this, you just go over to this little plus sign here. Now make sure your, um, you know, your timeline here cursor is actually at the beginning. And if you hit enter on your keyboard, that takes you back to the beginning. Because if I was to change the tempo and my cursor was here, then it's gonna set the tempo here. Because you could do tempo changes throughout a song. And that's pretty cool if you're doing something more related to like um, maybe symphonic music, I guess you can say. Or if you're doing something pretty creative that has you know tempo changes in it, like maybe some sort of metal music. Um, so if we click on tempo here, that brings up the tempo change window. And we're just gonna leave it 120, but you can change your BPM here if you want to. So I'm gonna hit okay there. So we're pretty much ready to record. Uh, but before I record, one more thing, I wanna turn off the count off tab here because I want to start recording right when I hit the record button. So here I go. This is a microphone check. Microphone check one, two, for the audio sourcer, how to record audio in Pro Tools tutorial. Check one, two. Okay, so we got our audio recording right here, and here's the waveform as you can see. Now, if you feel like you recorded it too softly, like you want more level out of it, as mentioned before, we can adjust this by uh, clicking on the clip here and then selecting the um, volume control here and just you know raising it up and down like that. Now, if you wanna do fine tuning, if you hold the control button while you're adjusting the level, this lets you get a little more fine tuning and it would be command on a Mac. So I'll put this back to zero dB here. And if you're happy with the level, but you just wanna see a larger waveform, you can go up to this button up here, hit the little up arrow on it, and that's gonna increase the waveform size. So we'll, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll leave it, how about right there? That looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's basically how to record audio. There's not a whole lot more to it. I mean, there's a lot to audio editing, which you're gonna have to see further tutorials from me on, and also mixing, but I mean, that's really all it takes to record audio in Pro Tools. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial and I hope you guys learned something. So if you did, give me a thumbs up and uh, make sure you subscribe so I can keep putting out this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, I will see you guys later. Until next time, peace out.